Hi, this is Molly Gold, President and Founder of Go Mom Inc. And today I am talking to you from my car, waiting in carpool. And it's all about cars, actually. This is the season in our lives where it's time to buy that first car for our teenagers. But we're not buying our teenagers a car for them to keep. We're buying really what amounts to a third family vehicle. And I just wanted to share some of the questions that we have and some of the crossroads that we're facing because, you know, with every new experience with parenting, you, you are finding out and learning as you go. And at the beginning of my son's junior year, actually, our oldest is a high school junior, I was surprised to see how many of his friends had cars, had cars that were bought for them, and actually had this dialogue on my personal Facebook page about what gives with this. In our particular case, we actually live 12 miles from school. So what we found this year, increasingly over the course of the year, was not having that third vehicle was just miserable. It has been an absolutely horrendous year from a transportation standpoint. Navigating the bus, navigating pickups from practice, whether or not to take the activity bus, it's just been too much. So we come to the conclusion that we need to buy this third vehicle, except for that we don't want to buy a car that's going to be one of the kids' cars. It's going to be a family car. So here are the things that are weighing heavily on my mind. First and foremost, our budget. It's limited. About $5,000. That's not a whole lot of money to buy a used car with that can follow under the next two parameters. And what are those parameters? Safety, safety, safety. We've had car accidents come close to our family experiences. We are not interested in having our kids in vehicles that aren't as safe as we can afford. So that's kind of a quandary. Also, making sure that the mileage isn't so, so high to fit into the price range that we've just thrown our money away and the next thing you know, we're having to fix a broken vehicle. The third thing is, it's, since it's a family car and our teenagers will drive their younger sister around, she gets car sick when she's in a sedan. So that means we need to look at something that sits up a little bit higher, a small crossover SUV. Well, let's go back to, if you're looking at a car that's 2005 or newer to try and fit in that price range, you've got to go back and look at all those safety features again because it's not nearly the same as a car is in 2013. One of the resources that we checked is the Edmunds Good Used Cars List, or Best Used Cars List, I can't remember what it's called, Edmunds.com, and that's been um, great. It provides a wealth of information about which cars are your best investment and all their safety ratings and things like that, so that's certainly a guidebook. And of course, I'm delighted to see that the Honda CRV is on there. I just, because Hondas hold their value, can't get the price point to match the mileage to make it all work out. So... We're dealing with these questions. Summer's not too far away. The kids get out of school in early June. And you know I live in a house full of sports fanatics, so it's only going to be more of the same. I know what I'm doing every single weekend now through mid-August. Baseball tournaments, tennis tournaments, every single day and one night a week, swim lessons, swim meets, three nights a week, baseball games, and I don't even know how many tennis practices and who knows what else will be in there. So we really need to get that third car, that third family car in place. And then there'll be the obvious questions of mom and dad will pay for insurance, but are the boys in a situation where they're earning enough money to pay for gas? And then once the school year starts, do mom and dad pay for gas to make sure that they can get back and forth the 25 miles round trip to school, but then they have to pay for more gas? I don't know. I don't know how it's going to all work out. But all I got to tell you right now is naps and pacifiers and learning how to play nice is a whole lot easier than trying to figure out how to buy a car for your teenagers. That's not really their car, but it's a family car that won't be throwing money down the drain, that won't cost you a lot to insure, that won't cost too much to keep up. Feel my pain. I'd love to know your tips about buying a car for your teenagers as a family car. I asked this question on my Facebook page at the beginning of the year and got some great feedback. And I'd love to know what busy moms just like me are dealing with this situation as they face that big transition. Thanks so much for stopping by. And if you've got little ones, I'm just telling you right now, take notes. It is sooner than you think. Talk to you soon.